IEEE 754 is the standard-ish floating point system that we use for binary numbers in computers today. Uh, it's used in the assembly languages for MIPS machines and ARM machines. It's a fairly common popular standard and understanding it will give you some insight into how numbers are stored in computers. So in the previous video we showed how all floating point numbers or all um, exponentialized fractional numbers uh, can be stored as a, a number like this s plus or minus s times some base b to the power of some exponent e. In base 10 it's some number times 10 to the power of something in base 2, it's going to be some number times 2 to the power of something. So in floating point IEEE 754, we're going to use 2 as the base. The significant we're going to do in a clever way that we call normalized. So instead of just having any significant, we're going to have a significant that always starts with 1 point something. We can do that because we can always shift the significant around if we don't have it. So if we have, for example, 0 0.1 times 2 to the something, we can always shift that by 1 to get 1 point something times 2 to the that plus 1 or minus 1, right? We can easily shift the number around to get 1 point something times 2 to the something. And so because that, we can use a standardization to say we're always going to have 1 point something times 2 to the something. And if something is always true, then we don't have to say that it's there. So we can omit that leading one in our encoding and save a bit, which is always nice if we can save a bit here or there. So the significant is stored in a, in a uh, normalized form. The exponent is stored in a biased form. This is a new thing that we haven't talked about yet. It's a way of representing negative numbers by taking the number that you want to represent and subtracting off some number that represents about half of your representation. So we'll, we'll see how this works in some detail when we do the toy problem, but basically it takes numbers and shifts them a little bit so that a number that is normally positive might be positive or negative depending on where it is in the representation. It's far easier uh, to understand than, uh, than two's complement, but it's a little less useful. For two's complement, um, we wanted to be able to do math properly in, 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 uh, in integers. In this case, for IEEE 754, we use bias representation for a couple of different reasons, and we'll see that when we get there. Basically, the idea is that it allows the entire floating point number to be sorted without decoding it. It's going to take some significant work to be able to add two floating point numbers together. So a little bit of extra work to um, move around the exponents is no big deal. It doesn't save us anything in terms of the effort to add two floating point numbers together if their exponents are in um, two's complement. So instead, we're going to use biased, and it'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. So basically, the idea uh, is that it allows us to uh, store the floating point number in such a way that we can sort them without decoding them, which is a nice little efficiency. So here is a toy example problem of what IEEE 754 looks like. There are lots of different sizes of IEEE 754. Uh, you might have a floating point number and a double sized floating point number. Those are 754 either 32 bits or 64 bits. Here is one in 8 bits. We need one bit for the sign that tells us whether the number is positive or negative. We're going to use three bits for the exponent, and that's going to give us ex an exponent between 0 and 7. But because we bias it, it's going to give us an exponent between um, negative 3 and positive 4, or negative 4 and positive 3, or something like that. And we'll see how that works exactly later on. And then the significant is normalized in the way that we said, which means those four digits that are in the significant, these ones right here, represent a number that is 1 point this, 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 times 2 to the power of this, minus the bias. So let's look at an example here. Uh, the bias in this case is 3. We're going to just say that. We'll just say the bias representation is going to be a, um, a, a some number of bits of representation, and we're going to say that the bias is 3. So if a number is between 0 and 7, we subtract the bias, which means it's now between negative 3 and positive 4. Right? We take whatever number it is, we subtract off the bias, and we get the number that that represents. So if we store the number 2 in the exponent, it represents uh, 2 minus the bias, which is negative 1, because 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So when the number 2 is stored in here, 0, 1, 0, that represents an exponent of negative 1. Okay? So the bias, bias exponent is a little tricky to think about, but basically all you have to do is take a number that's in the middle of the exponent range, 
0 to 7, 3 is more or less in the middle, and subtract that from the number that's represented, and that's how you get your number that it represents. The fractional part, like I said, is going to be a 0, 1, 0, 1 for this example, uh, which represents 1.0101. So if we have this number, 1010001 in this representation, then if we say this is a floating point number, then it means negative 1.0101 times 2 to the negative 1. That's the number it represents. Now, don't forget, 8 bits doesn't, doesn't know what it represents, right? If I give you an 8-bit number, you don't know if that represents an integer or a floating point number or a color or a smell or anything. We have to give it context. We have to frame it. We have to say that represents a floating point number. And in your programming languages, you can say, I want that actually now to be an integer. And that's called casting, where you take a number that used to be a floating point number and now represent it as an integer. And then you have to re-encode it. You have to say, well, it used to be this way. Now I'm going to encode it this way so that it is an integer instead of a floating point number. Floating point numbers have numbers after the decimal place. Integers don't. So we have to make a decision about what to do. And that's rounding or truncating, and that's later on. So in this example, just fi finish this example up. Um, what we've got is a number, 1010101, uh, which corresponds to negative 2 to the 1, uh, sorry, 2 to the negative 1, right, which comes from our bias here, times 1.0101, which, if we convert now to base 10, is negative 1.3125 times 2 to the negative 1 is negative 0.6625. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can either take that number, 1.0101, and convert it as it is to base 10, which is 1, and then not a half, but a quarter, and not an eighth, but a sixteenth. So 1 plus a quarter plus a sixteenth is that. Or we can take the number and use the exponent to put it in the right place first and then convert it, right? So we say 2 to the negative 1 means we shift this whole thing to the right by 1, and we get 0 0.10101, which is, this should be negative, which is a half plus, not a quarter, but an eighth, plus, not a sixteenth, plus a thirty-second. A half plus an eighth plus a thirty-second, if you do the math, gives you that number as well. So that's how we represent floating point numbers in base 2. We're going to need three different pieces of information, the sign, the exponent, and the significant, and we're going to put them together into a number that represents the number we're looking for.